Get the fuck out of here, you son of a bitch. You asshole. Get your ass out of here. Hey, staunch gang. Welcome to the not-so-wonderful world of Disney, a new series where, for some goddamn reason, I look back and chronicle the abysmal made-for-TV Disney films that aired on ABC Family during the final frontier of television. Kicking the series off, the failed pilot-slash-ill-fated prequel to the cult hit Romy and Michelle's High School Reunion, this, this one being titled Romy and Michelle in the Beginning. He won it! We start off at the girls' graduation, where they basically belittle everyone around them before deciding to save up for Los Angeles and not let anything hold them back. Then we get a three-year jump and see that they've only saved $8. <laughs> so naturally, they go to the movies. And we actually get to see them watch Pretty Woman for the first time. Which leads to them getting the confidence to take off to L.A. regardless of their budget. They then take a lead from Pretty Woman and dress like prostitutes. Because they're dim-witted, remember? They then wind up getting arrested for prostitution. <laughs> Luckily, an obvious man in drag is there to help the gals out. They just made a joke about a load. And he offers them a place to stay in a crowded apartment building full of rousing characters. Like these creepy, rapey, horny dudes who actually mistake all of them as drag queens. Huh. So quite the mix-up happens here, you see. The guys think that Romeo and Michelle are drag queens. And Romeo and Michelle, well, they think the guys are gay. Then they bump heads with the racist bitch neighbor. You gotta have one of those. It also kind of retreads a few plot points from the original, like having to get a job ASAP and kind of rehashing some costumes and stuff. Oh yeah, I guess I forgot with all the jokes that age so well, we also get an appearance from Paula Abdul for some reason. In fact, the movie was kind of sold on this cameo, but more on that later, I'm assuming. The girls then gear up and head to the club. Damn, a Dice Man joke? A Ford Fairlane joke? I'm telling you, these jokes in this movie surprise me and make the film quite watchable. If you, uh, have no life. <laughs> Damn. Another parallel from the original, I guess. However, this isn't a dream sequence. <laughs> I love how this girl right here, who is a supermodel, by the way, that the girls are fans of, ironically. Well, I love how she debates driving off after hitting her. <laughs> But she helps out and things seem to be fine. There's a boring plot line too with Michelle and this not gay guy. I don't know, shut up. 
And then we see a rift as Romy gets a new bestie in the supermodel lady who has this weird assistant dude. What the fuck? Meanwhile, Michelle's about to get it from the rapey neighbor guy. ABC family, everybody. God damn, do they have to go full Skinamax here? Seriously, what the f... God. Then Romy gets coaxed into going to the elusive club that she and Michelle weren't able to get into. Something she obviously doesn't want to do. But we need some sort of conflict here. We are getting to the third act. And apparently not even creepy neighbor dick could save Michelle's mood. Just as Romy arrives at the club, she's rudely interrupted by montages. This is a pretty funny gag. Aww. So, the missing shoe subplot thing is kind of just ended, and now Paula Abdul shows up to the drag show. It, it, it's a, this is a weird movie. And Romeo and Michelle? Well, shit. We'll see them again later in a much better movie, as Romeo and Michelle in the beginning just abruptly ends. Like, it, it's just, the movie's over. Romeo and Michelle in the beginning is a mess. And of course, was part of the wonderful world of Disney, which featured many oddball films and random one-off sequels. And stay tuned to Staunch TV to learn all about those. And this one is a definite oddity. However, not the strangers of the bunch. Be sure to check out my Encino Woman review next. Damn. Here, though, Romy and Michelle are not the lovable geeks we saw in high school. As now they're arrogant, rude bitches whose charm is just... Totally gone for the most part. And the amount of adult humor and references we get with the prequel is really astonishing. I mean, they make jokes about suicide, cross-dressing, prostitution, loads. There was even a mature content warning. ABC Family, everybody. Romeo and Michelle, The Beginning, was written and directed by the original's executive producer and writer Robin Schiff who created Romeo and Michelle in the stage play Ladies Room, and had previous film credits like writing the film Lover Boy. Lisa Kudrow actually played Michelle in the play and came on board when the film started pre-production, so that's how that worked out. And ironically, Romeo and Michelle in the beginning and the stage play Ladies Room were not the only versions of Romeo and Michelle, not really. There was also a 1989 TV pilot based on the play The Ladies Room called Just Temporary, that again saw Lisa Kudrow in one of the main roles. However, this time they were, they were renamed. Blasphemy. But overall, even with the creator's involvement, it's such a disjointed mess that regardless of its surprising laughs, really is not worth the ride. It kind of just makes you miss the original. Shit, I was about halfway through the movie when I realized Catherine Hagel was playing Romy. I mean, look at these two. Wouldn't you think Romy... And Michelle, I mean, am I wrong there? We don't give a flying fuck what you think. The supporting characters here are just set dressing, really. And the focus on fashion and whatnot seems to be a trope of these flicks. When, you know, anything girly is involved, it's like directly the plot's about fashion. One thing that really could have helped is some character tie-ins from the original. I mean, we could have seen Sandy Frank or Heather Mooney in younger iterations or something like that. If even for a second, you know? And if there was any kind of reference, it's totally lost here. And it's strange to see the high school flashbacks in the original, knowing that just a short time later, the events of this movie happens, but whatever. All I ever wanted was for people to think that we were better than we were in high school. I did enjoy it for the most part, and, you know, some of the off-colored humor was just spot on. If you're into that kind of thing, I'd say track it down, as it is indeed a worthy entry. In the not-so-wonderful world of Disney saga. This is stupid.